Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Utah Hockey Broadcast. I'm Anita Tuchia. I'm flying solo tonight at here at the Salt Lake City Sports Complex. We've got a men's two game. It should be an exciting one. The Utah Utes are hosting the Grand Canyon University Antelopes. So let's go through starting lineups really quickly. The forwards for the Lopes is going to be 48, Chase Shackle, 65, Logan Kozleski, and 87, Ethan Poole. The defenders are going to be 20, Nick Tarara, and 63, Bryce Caffey. The goaltender for the Lopes is number 72, Matt Diamond. And for Utah, is going to be defending the goal on your left. They're wearing their home whites, of course. The forwards are Otto Chow, number 8, 21, Jovi Milik, and 28, Zeke Endy. The two defenders are going to be 18, Zach Monaco, and 26, Zach Olszewski. Minding the pipes for Utah is number 30, Michael Biller, and they're off. Again, as I said, this should be an exciting match. These are two fit exciting match these are two fairly closely ranked teams with similar records and I know that they're bo both aching to get some points here and move up the ranks and we're starting off now with looks like it's going to be number 20 Nick Tarara trying to start a breakout from his own zone and he gets it up he passes it up and that's Poole sends it in deep Biller comes out to try and help out his defenders and here comes Utah. Chow's waiting for that pass from Andy. I'm sorry, from Milik. Milik's gonna skate it behind the net and he drops it for Chow. A little bit of miscommunication there looks like. Oh, nice there, nice move by Nahara who, who set, sends it in there. And here comes GCU. That's Chapman, he sends it in behind the net but nobody in black to pick it up and Grand Canyon's wearing their road jerseys with a black with a purple trim, very stylish looking jerseys. And they will be defending the goal on screen on your right. Fast and furious, we're getting started here. And ooh, a shot goes wide, gets, goes all the way to the other side. And they're still keeping it in there. Ooh, and it looks like that is number 17, or 27. Connor Frank, who goes down hard in the corner. Puck finally squirts out. Quick poke check by Chow, trying to get it out, but it stays in there. And finally, Moorhead sends it off. And here comes O'Shea, he sends it up. Nice pass up to Nahara. Nahara goes for a quick, quick wrist shot. And goalie Matt Diamond gloves that. A couple of... Uh, couple of uh, uniform clarifications. Number nine tonight is Bo Slater. And let's see, I believe there was one more. Uh, McKay Pond is wearing number 20. So you'll see that number 20 has got a different nameplate, but that is McKay Pond. And same for Bo Slater, he's wearing number nine. Sorry, Mr. Sumkowski, it's not Austin tonight, it's gonna be Bo. And like I said, uh, GCU comes into town. They're ranked 13th in the ACHA West. They're coming off of a four-game win streak, and they're facing Utah. Utah is uh, slightly ahead of them, ranked up there at number 11 in the ACHA West. And they've had a couple of losses most recently, but they've had four wins before that. So like I said, should be a very close, tight matchup, exciting matchup, and important for points, because since they're both teams are in the West, ACHA West, um, and the ACHA West ranking is one way to get to nationals. Uh, this is going to be important. Okay, and speaking of number 20, that's going to be Pond. He carries it into the corner. Looking for something past you. Out to the point. Across to Furlong. Furlong's got a shot, wrist shot from the circle, but it bounces off some shin pad. And someone's shin pad goes into the corner. And GCU recovers. Tries to send up a pass. Broken up by Baxter. Oh, and then intercepted by, that looks like 93, Tucker. And Tucker carries it in. He tries for centering pass, bounces off someone's skates, goes into the corner, Novak's in there to try and dig it out. Puck's kind of bouncing around. And it ends up behind the net. GCU still controls. Out to Tarara at the point, all the way across. Wrist shot goes off of, looks like it went, went off of uh, Worth's skate. And fighting for the puck there, Worth loses his stick, and he decides to just jump off the ice. Looks like that stick's broken, so he's, he's not gonna be able to pick that up. Here comes Utah. Oh, nice little move there by Nahara. He carries across the line. Sorry, not Nahara. That is Furlong. 
Monaco fighting to keep that puck in the zone. And it looks like he was unable to keep it into the zone, so we're going to have offsides. Puck did come across the blue line. So we're going to have a face-off just outside the blue line. i also like to welcome our fans here from GCU, Grand Canyon University, who might be tuning in. I will do my best. I had a little help from some parents and some of the guys who are not dressed tonight helping with names. I hope I won't uh, mispronounce them too badly. All right, Fast and Furious. This is a fast-moving game. Both teams skating, have, showing excellent speed on the ice and some nice stick handling skills as well. Puck ends up in the corner. Monaco with a wrist shot from the point. Nice pad save by Diamond. Puck bounces around now. Looks like GCU is going to try for a breakout. Here they come. It's going to be Edwards. And on the far side, sorry, I can't quite see his number, but that puck gets deflected and stick saved by Biller ends up in the netting. So we're going to have a face off. And taking the face off will be well. Both teams going to go for a line change. So, so much for me trying to figure out who's taking the face off. And it looks like it's going to be Kozleski for GCU and Indy and Utah controls. Chow brings it down the line. It gets bounced around a little bit. Milik picks it up. Milik goes through the circle and his, his chance gets poked away. Now here comes GCU. That gets broken up by Andy. Olszewski goes for a stretch pass for Chow. A little bit out of his reach. White icing waved off. Chapman goes, scoops it up back there. He tries to send it up to the boards. Up to Shackle. Puck still in the Grand Canyon zone. And Millick picks up the rebound. And he sends it along behind the net. Moorhead's back there trying to send it along. GCU gets it. And that's Shackle and O'Shea fighting for it. It does trickle out. Millick tries to send it back in. Shackle tries to send it back out. And that gets scooped up by 65 Kozleski. He passes it off and then he goes for a change that sent, gets sent in deep by number 14, Sam Hernandez. Ooh, and then the puck gets deflected back in. I don't think Utah was expecting that, so they got to scramble a little bit. Got a bunch of people in the corner and finally the puck shoots out. Gets picked up at the point. Franco sends it across the neutral zone to his teammate, whose number I can't see, I apologize. And ends up going in deep. Goes around behind the net to Osola. Nice little pass there to uh, number nine, Slater. And the puck comes out. There was a nice little chance there, but Slater just kind of ran into traffic, didn't, didn't, couldn't get the pass off. All right, Utah sends the puck in deep to Grand Canyon. Gets scooped up by Poole, I believe that is. Oh, sorry, Franco. And here comes GCU. They've got a chance here. Nice little stretch pass. And that shot goes wide. Utah picks it up in their own zone. Nice pass up to a solo. Oop, a little bit bond. A solo's reach. Tararson's back up to 28. That is Kilgora. And that goes for a wrist shot. And the puck comes back out. So Tarar picks it up, tries to start it again. Nice little pass. And fast and furious here. Puck ends up in the corner. Utah brings it up, up to Worth. Worth is looking for a centering pass that goes all the way through. Furlong trying to dig it out. He goes for a centering pass. Oh, Worth was there for the deflection, but nice little defense there by number 20. He knocks that down, Tarara. And the puck's still bouncing around, and finally GCU controls. Starts to break out from their own zone. Ooh, nice interception there by Yumina. Yumina sends it across to Worth, and Worth's shot goes high. Furlong gets retrieves that puck in the corner. Sends behind the net to Pond and goes down. Furlong jumps back up, back out to Monaco at the point, picked up by Pond. Pond does a little bit of fancy skating behind the net, tries to do go for a centering pass, but it gets deflected and ends up going all the way down to the other end. That's going to be chased down by Olszewski to Monaco. And then it gets intercepted. Boy, GCU is really putting on the, the pressure here. Edwards got it in, his, in the corner. 
out to the point to Chapman. Chapman sends a nice wrist shot in there, but it is gloved all the way by Biller. 12-13 left in this first period. No score by either team. And taking the face off, it looks like it's gonna be Pittman and Aguirre for Grand Canyon. Utah making sure that Billers, their goalie is ready. That's kind of important. And Utah wins the draw, but wins the draw and Fenny skates across the line. Nice pass there to Kurt, who goes for a wrist shot that goes very wide. And here comes GCU, Aguirre, nice stretch pass up to his teammate who crosses the blue line, goes for a wrist shot, but that one goes way wide. And the puck squirts out all the way out. And that means that Hernandez has to go and try and chase it, but he can't get there in time. It's gonna be icing. Aguirre sporting one of those old school mullets with the long hair. I haven't seen one of those in a long time. And I'm old. All right, gonna be a face off back in the Utah zone. And Utah wins the draw. Spins it around, sends it up to Fenne. Ooh, and Chapman just sends it in right on goal, but fortunately, nice stick save by Biller. Monaco starts it. Ooh, it goes off a skate. Pittman's trying to keep that from getting, tries to keep that from going back towards the goalie. Ooh, big hit there right on the circle. Another big hit next to the boards. That's Jalen Cordora. Oh, and then a big hit on mid-ice between Pittman and uh, the GCU player. And then Pittman goes to the, to the bench for a line chain. Boy, we're starting to get some, some physical play here. And the puck's jammed down there in the boards behind the net. Four, four bodies back there, back there trying to fight for that puck. Finally comes out. GCU comes out with it. Oh, very nice stretch pass. Up to Shackle, he throws it on net. Biller just deflects it off the side. Biller's one of those goalies, he's a lot of fun to watch. He's very good at controlling the rebound. So when the rebound comes out, very often, it, instead of coming out in front of the net, he sends it off to the side or into the corner. Milik tries to send it back down along the boards to Fenne. Fenne looking for a centering pass. Instead, he goes to Shea at the high slot, and it bounces off the shin pads of Shackle. And now Shackle picks up that rebound and carries it across the blue line, but he gets tied up by O'Shea. He's got another chance at the circle. Biller makes, tries to make a save. That rebounds away from him. And Utah now carries it across. I think that's Fenny dumping it in. Millick fighting for the puck. Right. Oh, sorry, that was Endy. And Utah unable to keep the puck in the Grand Canyon zone. Yumina pokes it back in. That gets scooped up by 87. That is Poole. He sends it across to... Kizleski, who has a shot on goal, stick safe, send in the corner by Biller. And Yumina picks it up behind the Utah net and sends a nice little hop pass up to Chow, who is waiting right over there on the opposite side. He carries across the blue line. He makes a shot, and it goes in. Diamond got screened by that, and I believe that was uh, somebody skated in front of him. I want to say it was uh, Pond skated in front of him. But Utah gets on the board first. Otto Chow at 9.39 for Utah. And GCU controls the puck off to that face off. Oh, Yumina gets bumped off of the puck. And now we got a two on one with GCU. Three on one. And right before we even get to announce the Utah goal, GCU's on the board. Utah's defense broke down a little bit. And next thing you know, it's like all black jerseys right in front of Biller. Not much you can do. And I believe there was a shot and a rebound that went in. We're going to. Listen for the announcement, and I will check my digital scoreboard. I also want to kind of make a disclaimer in advance. It's, it's a little hard to see some of these numbers on the dark jersey. I'm doing my best, and they don't all have nameplates. So I may, you may have to wait a bit while I figure out who scored the goal and who got the assist for that Grand Canyon goal. Nice, day, nice save by Diamond. 
Dmitriev passes off to 87. That is Poole who sends it in deep. Scooped, by, scooped up by Olszewski. Up to Osola. Slater gives, gives chase, but GCU sends back deep into the Utah zone. Nice little pass up to Nahara. Who, and, and Slater drops a pass to Nahara, who carries it in, and then centering pass out all the way out to the point. Olszewski with a nice, nice one-timer wrist shot. Diamond's got to make the save on that one. All right, so that is Mr. Jason Murphy gets the goal for GCU with the assist by Hunter Feewager. So we are tied up 1-1 with 8 minutes 42 seconds left in the first period, but I spoke too soon. Worth sitting right there for the deflection. I'm not sure what happened with GCU because he was sitting there all by himself. He takes that deflection one time in the near post. Diamond doesn't stand a chance against sliding across in time to get that one. So Utah gets ahead. 2-1, to one, 8 minutes, 37 seconds in the first period. Pretty exciting hockey action going on here at the Salt Lake City Sports Complex. If you're around, if you're nearby, come on over. You can buy your tickets online before you get here at the website, utahockey.com. And if you're thinking of coming to more than one game, which I would highly recommend, you get a pretty good discount by buying the all-tournament pass, which gets you into all the games for one easy price. And GCU's bench keep in the zone. Stevenson, I'm sorry, not Stevenson, Pond. See, even I'm getting fooled by the nameplates. Worth digging for the puck by the boards. Couple of GCU players, Olszewski's over there and Worth comes up with it. Oops, and then he, he loses it. And, oh, somebody goes down. Looks like that was Poole. And here comes GCU, he got a two on two. Ooh, pull, and he passes it off to Edwards, but Edwards, Edwards loses the handle on it and isn't able, to, isn't able to get a good shot off. Then there's a big scrum in front of the net and Biller takes offense to people encroaching on his crease. Biller's not one of the bigger goalies. And so I think uh, he probably gets a lot of challenges, physical challenges of uh, guys crashing the net to see if he'll if they can move him out of the way or intimidate him but I've watched him a lot now and he didn't get intimidated he's an excellent goalie he's a lot of fun to watch all right and that second goal indeed Ryan Worth from the K Pond and from Che Landakuzik Che wearing uh what number is Che wearing tonight he's wearing number seven so I apologize again I thought that was Jack Furlong but no that was Che Landakuzik All right, big hit in front of us, Pittman. Going physical against Chapman, and Puck ends up squirting by in the net. Hernandez goes and digs it out. And now GCU comes down, comes down with a big breakaway. It's gonna be Poole. He sends it in deep, nice save by Biller. It bounces out right into the waiting stick of Kurt, who sends it in deep. Diamond tries to, to cut that one off, is unable to. Puck's over there in the boards. Bunch of people fighting for it, still next to the board, still sitting there by the boards. Finally squirts out. Pool, pool gets it. He brings it across the neutral zone himself. Skates across the blue line, tries to pass it off, tries to get by his try to, tries to get by Yumina. But that gets that gets poked away. Moorhead sends it off to Kurt. And Kurt throws it in deep, but it's time for a change for him, so he goes to the bench. GCU, whoa, tries to send it along the boards, but sends, instead sends it into the bench. Good thing everyone's wearing helmets over there. So we're going to have a face-off to the right of Diamond. we got six minutes, 13 seconds left in the first period. Utah leads 2-1. to one. Andy facing off against Poole. A quick shot right off, right off the face up by Milik. And that's in the net. Diamond didn't even have a chance to set up. He didn't even see that one coming. 
So Utah now gets a two goal lead with six minutes, 11 seconds left in the period. I think two seconds went off, <laughs> ticked off the clock on that one. And the puck ends up going down into the GCU zone. Tarara picks up behind his own net, skates around, tries, tries to start the breakout, and here they come. That is number 90. Five. I'm sorry, I can't quite see his number. And then a no, quick shot there by number 28. That is Kilgora. Oh, and my, my mistake, I thought that was Milik, but that was Zeke Endy who scored that goal off the faceoff. Sorry about that, Zeke. All right, another shot there by number 88. That is Jack Novak. Pops up in the air, pucks loose in front of the goal. GCU picks it up, and Biller's down his back, but he managed to get up in time and scramble up in time to make the save for a minute there. Biller was kind of laying flat on his back, and he had surrounded by players, so it was getting hard for him to get back up on his skates. But he does, and he makes the save, and we're gonna have a face-off. Oh no, I was right the first time, I'm sorry. Jovi Milik, Zeke had the assist. All right, puck goes deep into the Grand Canyon zone and we are indeed gonna have icing. Which means we're gonna come all the way back to the other end of the ice, back in front of Biller to his right. And it looks like it's going to be Slater facing off against, is that 93? 83, Aguirre. Pucks bounce around a little bit, ends up dribbling into the Grand Canyon zone. Hernandez, that pass gets intercepted by Slater. Osola picks it up. Osola's got Nahara with him, so he skates across the blue line into the corner. Nahara's right there waiting for it. Oh, and it gets by him, but fortunately, Monaco picks it up. He tries to back it in there. Puck's still bouncing around. Looks like it could be a chance for GCU, and sure enough, here they come. It's gonna be Tucker. He just tips it across the line, and then he's gonna go back to his bench for a change. A little pass up to Nahara, and nice wrist shot right across the blue line, and Diamond loses the handle on it, and the puck is still loose, so no whistle. Boy, that one was scary. Olszewski drops it up along the boards again. Hernandez. Oh, nice pass, it's dangerous. Here we go, Joe Aguirre's got, got some room to rumble. And he drops a pass off and Biller's getting tied up. Fortunately, Biller kept his eyes on the puck all the way. Olszewski was back there to kind of clear the, clear the crease, help clear the crease. And we're gonna have a face off to Biller's left. Four minutes, 13 seconds left in the period. It's interesting, it looks like according to the scoreboard, let me look at my stats here. Grand Canyon is actually taking more shots on goal, but Utah has more of them that have gone in the net. So better quality shots. And Cordura starts the breakout from his own zone. Back to Cordura. Gets around one man and Cordura just carries it himself across blue line on the right blue line on the right side, goes for a drop pass, but miscommunication one timer. Wow. One timer looks like by Shane Edwards. And beautiful glove save by Biller, who had it all the way. I'm sorry, Alexander Randall, number 43. Biller takes that all the way. And we're gonna have a face off. GCU controls out to Randall. Randall goes, tries to dump it in there, but it goes bump, bangs off the shin guards of, of Pond. Pond picks it up. Sends it across. Ooh, it's gonna be a lot of work for Worth to get there in time, and he doesn't. So it's gonna get pushed back in there. Monaco's, I'm sorry, not Monaco. Moorhead's back there trying to dig it out. Worth is there, O'Shea is there. In comes Landakuzik. He finally ends up with the puck and sends it out to Worth. Here they come. Landakuzik crossed the blue line. Oh, but he doesn't get there in time. Pond got a little ahead of him, and we're gonna have offsides. So 
So keep your folks, keep your eyes on number seven, Che Landakuzik. He's got some, he's got some fancy skating skills and great stick handling skills. He'll make some moves that'll make your eyes keep, make your eyes pop open for sure. All right, puck ends, ends up in the Utah zone. Shackle kind of loses it, doesn't get a chance on it. Poole goes for a shot. Nice save by Biller. Poole picks it up again, but he's getting broken up by Pond. Pond sends it up to Landakuzik. He skates it across the blue line himself. Skates it around behind the net. Keeps going into the corner. Then drops back behind the net for Pond, who picks it up. Kicks it across himself. Up to the point. Is that Worth up at the point? Goes for a shot, and Worth is, sorry, Worth is there for the rebound. That was Stevenson. And here comes GCU. We got a two on one, maybe two on two. Ooh, Kizleski tried to give a leadoff pass to his teammate there, but it's just out of his reach. And here comes Utah. Now they're going to come back. Puck goes deflected up way up in the air, bounces up in the corner. Hernandez tries to get it. Landakuzik's got a chance, and he tries to get around the goalie. Nice save by Diamond. It bounced back out. Landakuzik grabs it again. He sends it off to Fene. Fenny skates in it across himself. Oh, and Yumino was there for the rebound, but he couldn't get a stick blade on it. And it bounces up. Pippen scoops it up, carries it across the neutral zone, dumps it in deep, into the corner. Fenny goes to the other side to try and intercept, but Hernandez is there instead. And the puck comes back the other way. We got a minute and 40 seconds left in this exciting first period of action. Hernandez grabs a puck. He tries to send it, hits somebody in the skate. Chapman tries to, to get it. Fene bounces off Fene. Finally, Oshevsky managed to corral that thing. And it's still bouncing around the neutral zone. Oshevsky again tries to go for a no-look pass to Kurt, but it gets intercepted by number 81. That is Jason Murphy, who lets off a cannon of a wrist shot that goes way too high. Pittman fighting for the puck there in the neutral zone. He goes down. Puck finally comes loose and GCU gets it. They get a chance for a two on two here. Here he comes. It's number 46, Shane Edwards. Nice pad save by Biller. Oh, Fenny goes down right in front of me. Covered with snow. Puck ends up behind the GCU net. GCU still trying to break it out of their own zone. 37 seconds left in the period. Here comes Franco. And he just goes and flings it on goal because he realizes he's running out of time. Oshevsky dumps it off to Monaco. Monaco gets tied up by a couple of people back there. Oshevsky comes along to help him out. Sorry, Andy comes along to help him out. Nice break up there by Oshevsky. Here comes Monaco. He sends it up. Nice pass up to Chow. Ooh, gets past Chow. But then Milik picks it up across the blue line. He carries it in across the circle. He goes and tries to beat the goalie. Oh, and it goes off. Nice, nice save by Diamond. Nice pad save. And Moorhead goes for, or, or sorry, O'Shea goes for a last wrist shot on the buzzer. Diamond makes a save. And that is the end of the first period. So after our first period of play, Utah leads GCU 3-1. to one. And it's been fast and furious action here. We are going to take a short break, and we will be back with you for the second period. Welcome to the Rocky Mountains. Welcome to open trails and new vistas. Welcome to stunning Red Rock.
Welcome to the greatest snow on earth. By thy tree of broken glass. Where the home. Welcome to game day fun. Anything could last. So let's go and take the words that we know. Welcome to the party! Welcome to Pac-12 Sports. Welcome to World Class Research. Welcome to the arts. Welcome to real world experiences. Welcome to a great education. Welcome to new friends. We can toss our worries far away from our hearts. And if you Welcome to the time of your life. Welcome to all you can imagine. Welcome to the University of Utah. Thanks for calling the Salt Lake Visitor Center. If you have any questions, please leave a message and we'll get back to you. Hello! Uh, I tell you what, I'm just going to put you on speaker. All right, uh, a little about me. I'm a bit of a phenomenal skier, so I want to take my family on a vacay, which is short for vacation. Hope you don't mind the abbreviations. I'm just short of time today, so I need to sort of hurry things along. Just a few simple questions for you. They call Salt Lake Ski City, but you do ski in the mountains, right? I'm just picturing myself skiing down the sidewalk there next to the shops. Knowing my luck, I'll do one of my big flips and end up in the traffic. <laughs> so I don't want that to be case. Look, I've got to go. You're really keeping me here. Although I will say I'm going to see your Utah Jazz play a basketball game. And I've heard there's a couple of Australians in the team. So here's my question. Are they causing you any trouble? I just had a thought. The average snowfall near Salt Lake is 500 inches. If I was to utilise all of that to build a giant snow person, would that be majestic or a bit scary? Oh, hey, listen, just quietly. I'm a big family guy. You know that. I've told you that. But after a few days with them, I'm going to need a drink. That's legal, right? I hear Utah has the youngest population of any state. So if I was to head down to one of your hot rockin' clubs or a social event, would there be a youth person in there that might be able to explain Snapchat to me? My kids just won't do it. Now I've heard there's a bit of a Sharks versus Jets rivalry between the skiers and the snowboarders. And if I made that movie, would you watch it? Ooh, when was your last Yeti sighting? Are you getting all this, by the way? I'm assuming you can rewind. The Utah State Bird is a California gull. I mean, even you've got to admit that is confusing. <laughs> I guess that's more of a statement than a question, but still I thought I'd bring it up. Now, your Ski City Super Pass. I take it that's part of the Marvel Universe. If I get that, will people call me... The Winter Soldier Man? I really wish you could see this. All right, well, this will be costing me, so I better go. Thanks for everything. Bye! Salt Lake Visitor Center calling you back to answer your questions. First off, yes, you can absolutely drink here. We'd prefer if you ski in the mountains, and I'm happy to call you Winter Soldier.
My name is Marguerite Van Komen, and I'm a Snowbird Ski Patrolman. My dog's name is Frank. What a good boy, huh? What a good boy you are. I start every morning waking up and having breakfast with the dog, and then we finish every day having dinner together, but everything in the middle changes. We train them using their own instincts, so instead of hunt for dinner, they're hunting for humans. A lot of thought goes into choosing these dogs. Number one, they've got to be able to handle the cold. Number two, they got to be pretty hardy. And uh, three, we're looking for very high drive dogs. The dog that uh, is going to chew your sofa up at home, we want that dog. The people, the, the mountain at Snowbird, it's just special. And everything you want to do is here in Salt Lake. Get off the plane, grab your gear from the luggage cart, and within 30 to 45 minutes, you're up here and skiing on snow. You know, Salt Lake is super unique. We have four full seasons. So you can come up, ski all morning till the snow gets a little too smushy, and then you go and hit 18 at the golf course at the bottom of the mouth, and then you can go out for a wonderful dinner and see theater. It's amazing how much you can fit into your day. And not only do we have everything that you want to do, but we have great people to do it with. Everyone wants to be outdoors, happy, and go and play. Every day is different, and I love that. I love showing up to work and going, what is on the plate today? Snowbird is my family, and Salt Lake is my home. And Frank is a great part of that. My name is Marguerite Van Komen. I'm a snowbird ski patrolman, and I am Salt Lake. Welcome to the Rocky Mountains. Welcome to open trails and new vistas. Welcome to Stunning Red Rock. Welcome to the greatest snow on earth. By the tree of broken glass. Where the home. Welcome to Game Day Fun. Anything could last. So let's go and take the words that we know. Welcome to the party! Welcome to Pac-12 Sports. Welcome to World Class Research. Welcome to the Arts. Welcome to real world experiences. We can go to the bridge that crosses over fear. Welcome to a great education. Welcome to new friends. We can toss our worries far away from our hearts. Welcome to the time of your life. Welcome to all you can imagine. Welcome to the University of Utah.
to start. Charges hard into the GCU zone, except the net goes off its moorings. So we're gonna have a reset of that. And uh, boy, they pulled the pins out of the ice and everything. Looks like we had a big bit of a body pile up, push the net off its moorings. So we're gonna have a face off. And it looks like it's gonna be Andy facing off against, can't quite see his number there from GCU. GCU does control. That was Novak. And nice job there by Monaco to get that puck back into the GCU zone. Diamond tries to send it around. He does send it around the boards. Still in GCU zone. Chow manages to scoop up that rebound. He sends it off to Milik. Milik swings around and goes for a shot. Diamond thought he had it. It trickled loose. He did have it. Then he moved. The puck squirted out, and Chow was right there to take advantage of that opportunity. Waste no time in getting a second goal of the game. Utah now leads four, four goals to one, barely 30 seconds into the first period. change as well. Slater is going to face off against Poole. GCU sends it in deep into the Utah zone. Feeweger sends it back. Oop, and then gets intercepted by Monaco. Whoa, and now a hard charging there. Here comes Nahara. He sends it across, and Osola is right there, and man, there's nothing Diamond could do. Osola was standing there all by himself. And when that pass came across, he just tapped it in there. Near side, another goal. And that is the first goal tonight for Luca Sola. And uh, that took exactly 20 seconds after the last goal. That is a very fast series of goal, goals scored. So we're back to center ice. And Utah now leads five to one. So I think now the thing we got to start watching out for is let's just make sure that uh, things don't start getting chippy. Sometimes when these games start getting out of hand, the play starts getting a little physical beyond just physical play, but you start getting some shoving and bumping and punching, kind of like what's happening after the whistle here. And the Utah player is going in there making sure to defend Biller because he's kind of down there on the ice and he can't really defend himself because he's got to hang on to the puck. So Utah goes and skates in and makes sure to clear people out of the crease. All right, going to have a face off to Biller's right. GCU controls. Quick shot there by 81 Murphy, but it goes wide. Still in the Utah zone. GCU trying to set something up here. Kind of playing, cycling in the corner there. And it's 43, that is Randall trying to send it deep. The puck ends up behind the net. Oh my goodness, and number 46 tries to go and take advantage of that. That's Shane Edwards, but Biller was right there covering that near post. Franco from the point, sends it all the way across to Randall, and it bounces off. Nice save by Biller again. Here comes Nahara, nice pass across to Slater, Slater to Moorhead who sends it out in behind the net. Here comes GCU, goes, Baxter breaks that one up. He was waiting for that one. Up to Landon, ooh, he's trying to get it up to Landon Kuzik, but it got by him, so GCU breaks that one up, and then Landon Kuzik is there to break it up. One good turn deserves another, I guess. And he carries across the blue line through the circle, gets past one defender, goes in front of the goalie, and then his shot goes wide, and then he goes and picks up, he falls down and picks up his own rebound. He centers it, Worth goes down. McKay Pond sends one off the glass. Now Worth is back there. Another centering pass, but there's like three black jerseys and only one, so it ends up going trickling into the Utah zone. Yumina tries to send it up 
to pawn, but he didn't realize the, the pass ended up behind him. He didn't realize it was coming towards him. And here comes GCU. That's number 65, Kisleski. He sends it all the way across. Big slap shot from the point. Biller's got it all the way. And that slap shot, if he will turn around, I will tell you who made that big slap shot. It was Caffey. I think that's his name. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to look that up. Yes, it was Bryce Caffey. He actually has a nameplate on there. So was, that, you would think that would help. All right, face off in the Utah zone. Utah controls, sends it all the way around the boards. Oh, shit. Kurt manages to get rid of that puck just before he gets nailed and loses his puck, uh, loses his stick. And he comes back just in time to pick it up, pick up the puck in the neutral zone and send it in deep. GCU picks it up, starts the breakaway. Or doesn't start the breakaway in their zone. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. All right, there it is. Bouncing off. Great save. Two great saves by Diamond. Pitman was right there trying to pick his pocket. Didn't happen. And Utah again. Caffey breaks up that pass. GCU tries for a break out of their own, but that shot by Kilgora goes off a human escape. And then Yumina gets the rebound, sends it up to Kurt. Kurt skates across the blue line himself on the left side, gets by one defender. And then he gets he gets that puck taken away from him by a diving save by a GCU player. He sends it up to Kilgoro, who ends up in the corner with Olszewski. Olszewski dumps it out to Fene. Fene sends it out to Yumina. Yumina up to Endy. Kurt tries to send it in. He does send it in, but it gets picked off by Hernandez. Oh, nice little interception there by, looks like, uh, Chow. But GCU regains control of the puck. And then they send it in deep, and Biller's got to make a stick save, and then he decides to just hold on to it. Gives Utah a chance to regroup. And GCU decides to go and change their line. Unlike the women's game earlier, Grand Canyon has plenty of extra bodies on the bench. Their program's been around a while. They've got, you know, historically a fairly strong program. They do have a men's one and a men's two. And I believe they, I'm not sure if they have a women's one. All right, cycling in the Utah zone is Grand Canyon. Puck ends up behind the net. Nice little poke there. Gets poked loose by, looks like O'Shea. He sends a stretch pass to Chow. Oh, goes, tries to make a move around him, but he gets stood up by Randall, and so that ends that offensive strike. Olszewski goes in the corner. He's going in the corner along there, fighting for the puck along there with number 87, who I should know by now, because I've looked at his number enough times, Ethan Poole. And the puck trickles out into the neutral zone, picked up by Monaco, who skates it around, back across the blue line on the left side. He runs into some traffic, and the puck comes loose. And GCU sends it along the glass all the way to the other end, and we're going to have an icing. So that means, of course, we will come back to the Grand Canyon end. Looks like the faceoff is going to be to Diamond's left. And I believe that the shots on goal are close, but GCU is actually out shooting Utah in terms of shots on goal. But Utah, of course, is outscoring GCU. So the puck ends up deep in the Utah zone. Icing waved off. Moorhead's back there chasing a GCU player for the puck. It just kind of squirts out. And that's number 83. He digs it out. He tries to look for somebody to pass to. Ends up getting knocked loose, and Moorhead sends it up, tries to send a pass up, and it's kind of bouncing around. It finally ends up going deep into the Utah zone. O'Shea picks it up. Sends it up to Osolo. So that sends it up to Nahara. Osolo scoops it up. Oh, no, he doesn't. Moorhead pokes at it, and it gets loose, and it, here comes GCU. Edwards has got a chance with one-on-one -on, -one on Biller. Can he do it? He goes for the backhand, but he's tied up, and it goes wide. Nahara picks it up, skates along behind the net, around the boards to O'Shea. O'Shea tries to skate it up himself. He does. He gets some space to skate, and there he goes, and then he gets tied up in the neutral zone. 
And because of that, Bo Slater crosses the blue line first, which of course is offsides. I'm probably gonna jinx the game by saying this, but it's been a very clean game. We haven't had a penalty yet, which is uh, interesting. Usually, uh, usually by now, there's usually a couple, but I'm not complaining. And like I said, I probably jinxed it. Hernandez picks up that puck right in his skate, skates it up across the blue line. Long locks flowing in the breeze. He sends it deep into the corner and Shackle tries to get it, but it gets by him, and the puck kind of bounces around the slot. And Worf finally, I'm sorry, Baxter finally kicks it loose to make sure it doesn't end up bouncing around in front of Biller. Puck's in the corner now. Whole bunch of people fighting for it. Oh boy, we're going to have a penalty, and Baxter's kind of wondering what happened there, but uh, I'm going to guess he's going to get boarding or roughing. So Baxter's going to sit for a couple minutes. We'll see what the referee signals. Yep, going to be boarding. I think uh, just the way that uh, the Grand Canyon player went hard into the boards, uh, it's potentially dangerous. He's far enough away where he could really end up slamming into the boards pretty hard. So two minutes for Mr. Baxter. And Utah now is going to be on the penalty kill. And GCU wastes no time in flinging a, a shot towards the net. And Utah wastes no time in sending the puck out. Our penalty kill unit right now looks like it's going to be Brown, Olszewski, Monaco, and Kurt for Utah. Here comes GCU. They're going to try and set something up again, of course. And that is Mr. 23, Dmitriev, out to the point to Poole and to the center to Geary, back out to the corner. Oh, and then that, they get their wires crossed, and that passing attempt ends up going all the way back into the Grand Canyon zone. They've got to start back in their own, own end and Brown's not going to let him just waltz back in there. Here we go. Here comes Poole across the line. He passes it back to Feewiger. Feewiger goes in the corner back to Poole doing their little cycling. We got just under a minute left in the Utah penalty. Tarara fakes the shot. Then he goes for a shot but it hits somebody's skate and careens way up into the net. We're going to have a face-off. Utah's going to get a chance to change. This penalty kill, penalty kill line looks like it's Pittman, O'Shea, Moorhead, and Fene. Pittman's going to face off against... Sorry, didn't catch his number. And Utah does manage to control the puck. Here comes Fenney. He goes across the line himself. He's got one on three, and he flings it across... I don't think that, it might have been a shot, but it was awfully wide. GCU's getting hung up, hung up and Finney intercepts the pass. Almost has another chance, he thinks, but it gets broken up and controlled by GCU. Here comes, I think that's Dimitri of 23, across the line. He's trying to go for a setting pass with a nice little poke check. That gets taken away from him. Kilgura sends it back in to keep the puck in the zone, in the Utah zone. 12 seconds left in the penalty kill for Utah. Grand Canyon's kind of having trouble getting this power play set up. They're really not looking like, like they have a man advantage. Utah doing a really good job of breaking up their box. And the teams are now back at full strength. Whoa, that was dangerous. Biller almost left that one in, but it goes. He managed to make the save. And Worth now coming down with, more, with O'Shea. O'Shea was trying to center that, but it hits somebody's stick and bounces back along the boards. Fenny's poking at it. Now here comes GCU. It's going to be Dimitriev. I'm sorry, not Dimitriev. Oh, and there's a goal. Maybe that was Dimitriev. Sorry, I saw a three, and I couldn't quite figure out who the other number was. But Grand Canyon gets on the board for their second goal of the game at 10.31 in the second period. And when my digital scoreboard comes up, I will tell you who that was, who got the assist. Once again, I want to welcome our Grand Canyon fans and our Utah fans who are listening in. And we're about halfway through the second period. And the puck ends up getting scooped up by Hernandez. He sends it across to Poole. Poole kind of does a little turn before coming out of his own zone, being pursued. He gets across the neutral zone. 
Across the blue line, goes for a centering pass. Oh, and boy, that just gets by the by the uh, stick of Shackle. And now here comes Utah. Pond to Landakuzik. He gets tied up right there in front of the Utah bench. Pond comes in to help, and then Landakuzik scoops it up. He skates across the blue line, and he goes uh, off into the corner. And the puck ends up behind the net. Worth to Landakuzik, and then GCU picks it up. Here comes GCU down the line. Oh, nope, gets slammed back up to Yumina. Yumina tries to pass to McKay, but McKay, but Pond didn't see it. Here comes Dimitriev. He skates across the slot, but he gets held up by Worth. Nice check there by Worth to stop Dimitriev's push. And then the puck ends up in the Grand Canyon zone. And here comes Grand Canyon again. They're gonna go and try for another one. Ooh, nice hit there by Milik to stop Franco. Puck ends up behind the net, and Yuman is back there fighting for the puck with Poole. Puck still hung up there, and that goal was scored by number 83, Joe, Joe Aguirre, with an assist by Sam Hernandez, number 14. Puck's bouncing around dangerously in front of the Utah net. Finally picked up by Milik. He's got Landakuzik on the other side, but he gets hung up, and the puck squirts loose, and Grand Canyon picks it up. And he tries to clear it around the ice, and instead he clears it into the benches, or into the stands. Yes, Souvenirs for everybody. And the announcer is, of course, warning everyone that the puck hurts if it hits you, and it will. It's not just a piece of rubber, it's a piece of frozen rubber, so it's like a rock. All right, so we've got a, we got a face off. It's going to be ND for Utah Pool. Utah wins the draw. Chow sends it back to Andy. And now the puck's back in the corner. Still back in the corner, ends up kind of popping out. Here comes number 43, that is Randall. He carries along, he sends it up to 22 Feeweger. And then Milik, I'm sorry, Andy sends it up to Milik. He gets tied up, so the puck ends up coming loose. Eight minutes, 15 seconds left in the second period. The pace has slowed down a little bit. Oh, I might have spoke too soon. The pace has slowed down a little bit on both teams. They're not skating quite as fast, and they're getting in a few more clinches. Uh, they're not spreading out quite as much, using the breadth of the ice. Oh, my goodness, that was a bad, one of the few bad deflections I've seen by Biller. He tried to make that stick deflection and sent it off out and away. Instead, he sent it out right in front. Fortunately for him, the GCU player couldn't get a good full blade on it, so when he sent the puck back in, it came in kind of bouncing, and Mil Biller was able to glove that. All right, face off here. Aguirre versus Nahara. Slater comes up with it, tries to clear the zone. Cavi tries to keep it in, but unable to, so Slater takes down, and then, oh, sliding save by one of the GCU players. That was kind of scary, actually. That's number 20. Where is my number? Nick Darara. Puck's stuck in the corner. Players fighting for it. Still in the corner. And it's still in the corner. Slater's in there. Tarara is in there. And it finally comes, comes loose, and it looks like that is going to be number 81 by GCU, but he gets intercepted by Moorhead. Slater tries to Get it around him. Oh, nice little move there by Osola, picking that off. He sends it up to Slater, who's got two defenders to beat. Can't do it. And GCU picks up that deflected puck. Aguirre across. Oh, nice pass there. Oh, that was a perfect chance there by Edwards, but he couldn't get his blade on it, and so the puck ends up kind of getting by him instead of going forward, which is I'm sure what he wanted. Here's a chance for Nahara. He crosses the blue line, centering pass. Oh, nope, he goes ahead and shoots right on goal. Diamond makes a stick save. Another centering pass to um, Brown, just out of his reach. Baxter sends it along behind the net. Brown's got to go chase after the corner. He's going to have company. And oh, he gets tied up, sure enough. Kurt's there trying to get that puck back into play. Still stuck along the boards. Brown's in there. Kurt's in there. Pittman goes in, digs in the corner. GCU comes up with it. Oh, and it gets broken up, and then the puck does trickle out. And now here comes GCU crossing the blue line. That's number 88. That is 
Jack Novak. Chapman scoops it up behind his own net. He's being pursued by Brown. Back up to Novak. Novak's having a little trouble. Baxter finally takes the puck away from him and sends it in deep behind the GCU net. Kurt tries to send it along the boards. Puck's kind of just bouncing around. I think both teams are just kind of doing these like no look passes, just trying to clear the puck out of the zone. And it's not, they're kind of organized, their organization is kind of breaking down a little bit. Their playmaking is breaking down a little bit. Five minutes, 30 seconds left. Utah leads five to two. Oh, here's a chance. Novak misses on that shot, on that crossing pass. Puck's still bouncing around in the circle. Brown sends it up to Kurt, but he loses the handle on it. He's unable to move it forward. Ooh, Yuman are trying to get that get the puck to go forward. Pittman scrapping forward along the boards. He gets it past Shackle, and it goes all the way into the Grand Canyon zone. It's not going to have not going to be icing. It's just going to be in deep. Cordura wasn't paying attention, and Yuman intercepts that. He goes through the circle. He goes for a wrist shot. Nice blocker save by Diamond. Worth tries to tap it back in there, but it's deflected by Cordura. Worth gets the rebound again. The puck's just bouncing in the air. Pond tries to get it. And now here comes Shackle to Cordura, but he's got to make sure he's got to be careful. They had to get back off on sides. And now they're on sides, but instead it's Yumina to Pittman. No, not to Pittman. Sorry, to Pond. And the puck's still bouncing around. It finally comes out, and now here comes Cordura. He's got Shackle with him. He carries it across the line. They're good. Good to go. Randall was waiting for the pass, but it gets intercepted and broken up. And here's a breakaway chance for Worth. He carries it across, and he goes for the shot. Nice little move there. Great pass from Landa Kuzik, who was, like, spinning around. He saw Worth breaking off to his right. He gives him the pass. Worth just has one guy to get by, and he beats Diamond like nothing. Utah now leads 6-2 at 3.56 in the second period. That was a nice, great little move by Landa Kuzik to Worth. And like I said, these games here for the men especially are really important in terms of their West District, ACHA West District rankings. So every, every game they can win here is, helps boost them up in the rankings in the West District and moves them closer to that chance to qualify for nationals, which of course are going to be in Marlboro, Massachusetts in February. I'm sorry, in March. Andy skates around one timer by, by Monaco, goes wide. Puck ends up behind the net. Still fighting for it is Andy. Chow comes in to help. Oh, sorry, Milik. Milik tries to get it out to, to Andy. The puck squirts loose, and now here comes GC, GCU. They've got a chance two on two. Feewager gets... Feewager was sitting there looking for the deflection. I think that Biller actually got a piece of that. And Monica loses a stick. He's got to go pick it up. And meanwhile, while I was watching Monica lose a stick... I think we had an offsides. Nope, we had icing. That'll teach me to look the wrong way. Three minutes, four seconds left in the second period. Andy is facing off against a Gary, I think. Maybe not. Nope. He's facing off against Novak. Oh, and GCU with a chance here. Edwards had that one. He, all he saw was nothing but net, but his shot goes wide. And a shot from the point. Biller makes a save and then drops it off. And then another shot from the circle by GCU. That one bounces back in. Utah's not, not having their, their uh, defense is breaking down a little bit. Unable to clear the puck out of the zone. Chapman sends it into the corner. To Mer Mertel. And then Monaco tries to clear it all the way out, but he's unable to do so. And now here comes Milik. He's got a chance. Milik's got some wheels. If he can spin around, he's got Chow waiting for him in the center. He dumps it in and decides it's time for a line change instead. And that was a 
Not a smart pass there by GCU. Milik almost was able to get that, but he just kicks it loose. And it ends up deep in the Utah zone. Shea to Moorhead. Moorhead's looking up. He's got Osola. If Osola can get to it. And then Nahara swoops in. Nice little move there by Nahara to Osola. And now here comes GCU the other way. That's Mr. 88. Mr. Novak, he's in the corner with O'Shea. And then it ends up in the back behind the net. It looks like that's a Gary fighting with Moorhead. One-timer from the point goes way wide. Franco digs it out from the point. He tries, <laughs> he tries to send it in. And Kilgora tries to, to knock it down out of the air using his leg and the stick and misses on both. Osola now scoots around behind the net trying to stop the puck. Puck's bouncing around and finally trickles loose. And Novak skates around behind the net being pursued by O'Shea. He tries to send it up to the boards. And the puck comes loose and now Brown's got a chance. He's got open ice. He's gonna skate one-on-one -on -one with the goalie. The defender manages to get there and Brown gets tied up and is unable to get a shot on goal. 45 seconds left in the period. Here comes Mr. 28, Kilgura. He goes down in a heap. GCU recovers behind their own net. That's Mr. Poole. Oh, and they go for, they go for a deflection out front. Kilgura was waiting for it, but the puck goes by everybody. Yumina scoops it up behind his own net. Up to Brown. Pittman's in pursuit. Brown tries to knock it down. Baxter scoops it up, picks it up, but he's being harassed. Here comes Yumini, he sends it up the boards to Fene. Fene sends it up the boards, but it gets intercepted by GCU. Cordura just flings it on net. Billard just lets it go because he realizes he doesn't need a faceoff with a few seconds that are left. And we end the second period with Utah leading six to two. And that was quite a bit of a scramble there. And it's like a lot of broken plays and a lot of, uh, a lot of time just digging pucks out of the corners. We'll see what happens in the third period. It'll be interesting to see what uh, head coach Nick Fornelius of Utah has to say to his to his team because uh, I saw a lot of broken plays there and I don't think that's I don't think that was the point. I don't think that was the idea. So we will take a short break as well and we will see you back here for the third period. Welcome to the Rocky Mountains. Welcome to open trails and new vistas. Welcome to stunning Red Rock. Welcome to the greatest snow on earth. By the tree of broken glass. Welcome to Game Day Fun! Welcome to Pac-12 Sports! Welcome to World Class Research! Welcome to the arts. Welcome to real world experiences. We can go to the bridge that crosses over Welcome to a great education. Welcome to new friends. Our worries far away from our hearts. And if you listen, Welcome to the time of your life. Welcome to all you can imagine. Welcome. 
Welcome to the University of Utah. Thanks for calling the Salt Lake Visitor Center. If you have any questions, please leave a message and we'll get back to you. Hello! Uh, I tell you what, I'm just going to put you on speaker. All right, uh, a little about me. I'm a bit of a phenomenal skier, so I want to take my family on a vacay, which is short for vacation. Hope you don't mind the abbreviations. I'm just short of time today, so I need to sort of hurry things along. Just a few simple questions for you. They call Salt Lake Ski City, but you do ski in the mountains, right? I'm just picturing myself skiing down the sidewalk there next to the shops. Knowing my luck, I'll do one of my big flips and end up in the traffic. <laughs> so I don't want that to be the case. Look, I've got to go. You're really keeping me here. Although I will say, I'm going to see your Utah Jazz play a basketball game. And I've heard there's a couple of Australians in the team. So here's my question. Are they causing you any trouble? I just had a thought. The average snowfall near Salt Lake is 500 inches. If I was to utilise all of that to build a giant snow person, would that be majestic or a bit scary? Oh, hey, listen, just quietly. I'm a big family guy. You know that, I've told you that. But after a few days with them, I'm gonna need a drink. That's legal, right? I hear Utah has the youngest population of any state. So if I was to head down to one of your hot rockin' clubs or a social event, would there be a youth person in there that might be able to explain Snapchat to me? My kids just won't do it. Now, I've heard there's a bit of a Sharks versus Jets rivalry between the skiers and the snowboarders. And if I made that movie, would you watch it? Ooh, when was your last Yeti sighting? Are you getting all this, by the way? I'm assuming you can rewind. The Utah State bird is a California gull. I mean, even you've got to admit that is confusing. I guess that's more of a statement than a question, but still, I thought I'd bring it up. Now, your Ski City Super Pass. I take it that's part of the Marvel Universe. If I get that, will people call me... The Winter Soldier Man? I really wish you could see this. All right, well, this would be costing me, so I better go. Thanks for everything. Bye. Salt Lake Visitor Center calling you back to answer your questions. First off, yes, you can absolutely drink here. We'd prefer if you ski in the mountains, and I'm happy to call you Winter Soldier. My name is Marguerite Van Komen and I'm a Snowbird Ski Patrolman. My dog's name is Frank. What a good boy, yeah. What a good boy you are. I start every morning waking up and having breakfast with the dog, and then we finish every day having dinner together, but everything in the middle changes. We train them using their own instincts, so instead of hunt for dinner, they're hunting for humans. A lot of thought goes into choosing these dogs. Number one, they've got to be able to handle the cold. Number two, they got to be pretty hardy. And uh, three, we're looking for very high drive dogs. The dog that uh, is going to chew your sofa up at home, we want that dog. The people, the, the mountain at Snowbird, it's just special. And everything you want to do is here in Salt Lake. Get off the plane, grab your gear from the luggage cart, 
and within 30 to 45 minutes, you're up here and skiing on snow. You know, Salt Lake is super unique. We have four full seasons. So you can come up, ski all morning till the snow gets a little too smushy, and then you go and hit 18 at the golf course at the bottom of the mouth, and then you can go out for a wonderful dinner and see theater. It's amazing how much you can fit into your day. And not only do we have everything that you want to do, but we have great people to do it with. Everyone wants to be outdoors, happy, and go and play. Every day is different, and I love that. I love showing up to work and going, what is on the plate today? Snowbird is my family, and Salt Lake is my home. And Frank is a great part of that. My name is Marguerite Van Komen. I'm a Snowbird Ski Patrolman, and I am Salt Lake. Welcome to the Rocky Mountains. Welcome to open trails and new vistas. Welcome to stunning Red Rock. Welcome to the greatest snow on earth. By the tree of broken glass. Welcome to game day fun. Anything could last. So let's go and take the words that we know. Welcome to the party! Of thoughtful dreams. But if you listen, you can still hear. Welcome to Pac-12 Sports. Welcome to World Class Research. Welcome to the arts. Welcome to real world experiences. Welcome to a great education. Welcome to new friends. Our worries far away from our hearts. And if you listen, Welcome to the time of your life. Welcome to all you can imagine. Welcome to the University of Utah. Thanks for calling the Salt Lake Visitor Center. If you have any questions, please leave a message and we'll get back to you. Hello! Uh, I tell you what, I'm just going to put you on speaker. All right, uh, a little about me. I'm a bit of a phenomenal skier, so I want to take my family on a vacay, which is short for vacation. Hope you don't mind the abbreviations. I'm just short of time today, so I need to sort of hurry things along. Just a few simple questions for you. They call Salt Lake Ski City, but you do ski in the mountains, right? I'm just picturing myself skiing down the sidewalk there next to the shops. Knowing my luck, I'll do one of my big flips and end up in the traffic. <laughs> so I don't want that to be the case. Look, I've got to go. You're really keeping me here. Although I will say I'm going to see your Utah Jazz play a basketball game. And I've heard there's a couple of Australians in the team. So here's my question. Are they causing you any trouble? I just had a thought. The average snowfall near Salt Lake is 500 inches. If I was to utilise all of that to build a giant snow person, would that be majestic or a bit scary? Oh, hey, listen, just quietly. I'm a big family guy. You know that. I've told you that. But after a few days with them, I'm going to need a drink. That's legal, right? Shh. I hear Utah has the youngest population of any state. So if I was to head down to one of your hot rockin' clubs or a social event, 
Could there be a youth person in there that might be able to explain Snapchat to me? My kids just won't do it. Now I've heard there's a bit of a Sharks versus Jets rivalry between the skiers and the snowboarders. And if I made that movie, would you watch it? Ooh, when was your last Yeti sighting? Are you getting all this, by the way? I'm assuming you can rewind. The Utah State bird is a California gull. I mean, even you've got to admit that is confusing. I guess that's more of a statement than a question, but still I thought I'd bring it up. Now, your Ski City Super Pass. I take it that's part of the Marvel Universe. If I get that, will people call me... The Winter Soldier Man? I really wish you could see this. All right, well, this would be costing me, so I'd better go. Thanks for everything. Bye! Salt Lake Visitor Center calling you back to answer your questions. First off, yes, you can absolutely drink here. We'd prefer if you ski in the mountains, and I'm happy to call you Winter Soldier. All right, folks, we're ready for the third period. Utah leads 6-2. to two. I was not expecting uh, this outcome. I really thought it was going to be a closer game, but uh, I also think that Grand Canyon doesn't have quite all their holes filled either. Like, they've got plenty of bodies on the bench, but I'm not seeing the consistency in their, in their plays where they're able to put together plays and commit from end to end right you know connect the dots so maybe that's uh maybe that's just something that's uh, going on for them but based on the on paper or my record i was expecting to have a little bit closer game um let's talk a little bit about the schedule so this again is the beehive class or the beehive showcase so we have multiple teams coming in and the men they're going to be facing grand canyon tonight boise state tomorrow University of Wyoming on Saturday, and then University of Montana on Sunday. And Montana is going to be an exciting game because they, as if I remember correctly, I'm going to look it up here really quickly, they are ranked fifth in the ACHA Western Region, so they're going to be a tough team. Um, like I said, GCU is ranked 13, so a little bit, a little bit behind Utah. Boise State is ranked 22nd, so they're quite a ways down the rankings. Uh, uh, from Utah and then Wyoming as well is also ranked quite a ways down there so I expect that Montana game to be very competitive of course I said that about this game but based on the on the win-loss records and the rankings and the points I think I do think Montana is going to be a is going to be a tough match and as I also mentioned right we have uh, multiple games for the women as well 
because they're having their Beehive Showcase. I'm not sure if this is an annual event or not. It's it's pretty fun being able to watch so many teams in uh, a few just a few days, right? 12 games in four days. Actually, I believe it's 14 games in four days. And, uh, you know, you can see a lot of hockey. You can see a lot of young, young hockey players. As Chris Perry likes to say of the WCHL, he's the commissioner of the WCHL, which, of course, is men's one, is that, you know, these kids are playing for the love of the game because they are not getting an NCAA tuition. They are actually paying to play. And uh, it's pretty high-level hockey. It's a competitive league. ACHA has competitive league. We have a number of players on both the men's and women's team who have played NCAA and for some reason, whatever reason, have decided to you know, change colleges and still want to play and love playing here in Utah. All right, so it looks like we're going to have a face-off just outside the Grand Canyon zone. And Utah controls. So Shea's going to skate it around, trying to start the breakout. He goes across the, the neutral zone. He tries to send it up to a solo, but it gets by him. And Hernandez picks it up. And now it looks like Grand Canyon's going to come back the other way. And a shot goes very wide from Grand Canyon. And it careens all the way down to the other end, picked up by Randall in his own zone. Since tries to send it up, just get something started, but it gets past that player. We've got a stick on the ice. Somebody must have broken a stick. So now Slater picks it up in neutral zone, comes down, down the right side, goes for a wrist shot, blocker saved by Diamond. Boy, that rebound came out right in front of the net. And now Diamond's out of position. And he scrambles back to get in place and hug that post. And Grand Canyon controls the puck. Fighting for the puck in the corner there. Up to Randall. Randall tries to send it out, but intercepted by Utah. Worth tries to skate it across. And he goes for a skate by, and Diamond manages to make the save. Boy, he was like leaning backwards, and I'm not sure how he managed to get a glove on that, but he did. And we are 17 minutes, 13 seconds at that mark in the third period with Utah leading 6-2. to two. And let me look at the shots on goal. I think I promised to do that earlier. And the puck is staying in the Grand Canyon zone. It dribbles by Kizleski. And then here comes Grand Canyon. Looks like that's Randall trying to center pass and Billings just sprawled out all over the ice. He was trying to go for a centering pass to Shackle and Worth road Shackle out of the crease. Got him out of the way and Biller decided to just hop on that, jump on that puck. All right, in the second period, Utah was had seven shots on goal. Grand Canyon had four. By comparison, Utah had 10 shots in the first period on goal, and Grand Canyon had 18. So the shots on goal production really dropping down for Grand Canyon, not so much for Utah. And uh, I mean, that's a pretty good conversion if you have 17 shots on goal and six of them go in. And Lando Kuzik goes, tries to go for a shot, Slater's Back there, fighting for the puck against the boards. Worth comes in to help. He finds, digs it out. But instead, it looks like it's Caffey. And he just hucks it up over the line to try and get it out of his own. But he puts a little bit too much of that, a little too much lift on it. It ends up going out of play. So we're going to have to retrieve a new puck. And we'll have a face-off that looks like probably just inside. Yep, it's going to be inside the zone. Two diamonds right. And it's the Landa Kuzik facing off against Murphy. And Utah manages to keep it in. Olszewski keeps it in, but then gets tapped out. And now we've got GCU coming down a two-on-one against Monaco. And then they just put the brakes on. He sends it across to Caffey. Oh, and Murphy's right there. Boy, there's nothing you can do. Oh, I'm sorry. Dimitriev is right there. I'm not sure where the defender was uh, on that play, but Dmitriev gets, I believe, his second goal of the game. Let's check. And... Oh, no, he did not score a goal prior to this, so he gets his first goal of the game at 16-11, making the score 6-3. to 
three goals is not insurmountable in 60 minutes. So Utah needs to stay on their toes. They can't squander a, a four-goal lead. All right, here comes Fenny. And that was Pittman bringing it across the line. Fenny gets tied up and ridden into the corner. Pittman now goes in the corner, and he goes down. Fenny scoops in, comes in to help him out. One-timer from Oshevsky goes wide. Kurt managed to keep that from dribbling too far out. Puck ends up getting tapped around by Chapman. Olszewski lays that hit on, on his guy. And uh, I was so busy watching the hit, I missed the shot. But anyway, Diamond makes a save. And we're going to have a face-off to his right. But as I was saying, uh, Utah had better be careful. You don't want to squander a four-goal difference. Grand, Grand Canyon's chipping away, and it only takes three more to tie this thing up. O'Shea goes in the corner, being pursued. Fene's there, fighting for it along the boards. The puck goes way up in the air. Big hit there by Shea. O'Shea on his man. That was 28 Kilgora. Mm -hmm. And then Moorhead doing a little bit of fancy skating in the corner. Finally ends up breaking free, going behind the net. Oh, gosh, big hit. Big hit on, on uh, Moorhead right there behind the net. And maybe too big a hit because we're going to have a penalty on one of our Grand Canyon players. It is going to be Mr. Four something, 43. Mr. Randall goes into the box for two minutes. Probably, I'm guessing it was roughing. I'm not sure. I didn't see the I didn't see the hand signal, but I'm guessing it was roughing. So Utah is going to go on the power play, and that power play unit is Milik, Endy, Nahara, Chow, and Monaco. Oh, two minutes for boarding. It was not roughing, it was boarding. All right, now we're going to have another face-off. Nahara for Utah. Puck is still kind of bouncing around. And Chow manages to keep it in, kicks it in there really quickly. Sorry, that was Monaco who keeps it in. Chow keeps it in with his body. Nice move there by Chow. Puck ends up behind the net. Nahara's fighting for it. Gets scooped up by Milik. Out to Andy. Ooh, out to Monaco. A little bit too much mustard on that pass. Chow picks it up, sends it into the corner. Utah's having a little trouble getting their box set up here on this power play. Milik has got the puck bouncing around, and finally it trickles loose, and Monaco sends it up to Andy, up to Milik. Milik skates it in. All the way across, one-timer by Chow. He gets the rebound back, and back to Milik. And then Andy's got it. Andy, nice, nice little move there. He tries to send it into Chow, but Chow gets ridden off the puck by number 88, Jack Novak. Now the puck's stuck over there, and looks like we're going to have a penalty on somebody. Oh, it's going to be on Utah team captain. Antonio Nahara, he's shaking his head. He doesn't, I don't think he thinks that that was his, he was the only one involved in that because he was the one who ended up on the, on the ice, laying there on the seat of his pants. But nonetheless, it's going to be four on four for 58 seconds until Randall is liberated. And then after that, it'll be a power play for Grand Canyon. Meanwhile, Michael Biller in the net showing off his butterfly skills. All right. Slater on the faceoff. Grand Canyon comes up with the puck. All right, so Nahara's penalty was roughing two minutes. All right, and the puck squirts loose all the way to the other end. Chapman's going to go pick it up in his own zone, being pursued by Slater. Intercepted by Pond. Boy, that was an ill-advised move by Chapman. Pond probably wishes he had that one back because he had, he had a chance. Diamond was down, but he just hit him in the chest instead. So we're going to have a face-off. 
in the Grand Canyon zone to the left of Diamond. 29 seconds left on the Randall GCU penalty. A minute 31 left on the Utah penalty to Nahara, which means that once Randall comes out of the box, Grand Canyon will have a one-man advantage for another minute. So Yumina sends it in deep. Slater goes and chases after it. Chapman here fighting for it. Landa Kuzik manages to intercept it, but then Hernandez scoops it up. He said, excuse me, he sends it out to Edwards, who sends it in deep, and then Biller goes and sends it around, and that was interesting. Biller sends that puck around the back of the net, and the uh, GCU player tried to take it from him, and he ends up on the seat of his pants. Pond back there, fighting for the puck. Yumina sends it up. Nice little nifty little pass to, to Pond. He tries to skate it across, but he loses the handle on the puck. And it's coming all the way across. A little bit too far. It's going to be icing. Which means, of course, the puck's going to come all the way back to the other end. Meanwhile, Grand Canyon is back to five men. Utah is still on the penalty kill for another 46 seconds. And those four are Worth, Andy, Pittman, and... Oh, sorry. Worth, Andy, O'Shea, and Baxter. And it looks like it's going to be Andy taking the face off against the GCU player. Hernandez picks it up and behind his net, sends it behind the net to Chapman. Chapman sends it back to Hernandez, who carries it across the neutral zone, then across the blue line on the right side. He's looking for somebody to pass to. Kilgore was just kind of hanging out at the point or at the, in the high slot, waiting for that pass that never came. GCU doing their box, working the puck around. Utah doing a very good job of not getting sucked over to one side or getting pinched in too far. And they managed to clear the puck all the way to the other end. Five seconds left in the Nahara penalty, so GCU's got to hustle up, and that's kind of it. Both teams back to full strength. Here comes Fieweger down the left side across the blue line. Tries to skate it through the circle. He tries to send it in there to the waiting. Can't tell who's waiting there for the, the puck. That was Kizleski, who loses a stick in the process. He's kind of pointing at the referee, saying, the guy grabbed my stick. And then Utah's going to have to regroup in their own zone. Oh, that was an interesting pass. Right off of somebody's skate. Right, right to the waiting... Uh, Kizleski, but then Pittman scoops it up, out to Fenne. Fenne carries it around behind the net. He doesn't really have anyone to pass through. All the way across to the point, though, is Worth. He lets it fly, and the puck ends up getting deflected up and into the netting, so we're going to have a face-off. Big ooh from the crowd. So the next opponent tomorrow for M2 is going to be Boise State. And that game is going to happen at 4.30 p.m. Prior to that, at 1.30 p.m. is going to be the women's game. And the Utah women are going to take on UMass Amherst. All right, puck kind of squirting around. Randall's going to scoop it up. Skate behind his net. He gets greeted by Fene. Cordura tries to send it along and keep get it keep it going along the boards oh big hit there <laughs> big hip check between it's like monaco and can't tell who else that is over there a little bit of a little bit of chatter but nothing really nothing really happening just just talk and looks like that must have caused caused them to go offside so we're gonna have a face off here and the puck just kind of bounces out of that face-off up into the air and into the Utah zone. Monaco tries to clear it unsuccessfully. Still fighting for it in the corner. Randall's in there. Monaco's got to go jump down and scoop it behind his net. And then he sends it up, tries to send it up to the neutral zone, but Osola was going the wrong, skating the wrong way. So it ends up back behind the net. Biller sends it along the boards to Monaco. Monaco being pursued by Cordura, who finally decides it's time for a change, so he's going to head to the bench. 
Oh, nice little pass there to Nahara, but he runs into a crowd of three black jerseys and only one white jersey. That doesn't use that math doesn't usually add up very well. Oshevsky, whoa, Oshevsky managed to avoid a big collision right there in the neutral zone. Quick shot there by Poole, goes off some of his shin pads. To Franco tries to send, send it into the corner to his teammate. Caffey sends it in deep. And we're gonna do a little bit of a chase. Olszewski's back there. Somebody else loses a stick. He picks it up, that's Nahara. Just in, picks up his stick just in time to pass it off to Moorhead, to Slater. And then back the other way. Yumina picks it up in his own zone. Up to Milik, who gets around one skater, and then he just flips it into the zone. It's gonna be chased by Tarara, who looks over his shoulder, because here comes Andy. And then here comes GCU. They're gonna try and start something. That's yeah, Mr. 83. Aguirre tries to get something going in the neutral zone and ends up all the way into the corner, being chased by Mertel. Aguirre sends it back into the corner. Tarara trying to get, get it loose, but Baxter's there fighting for it with Mertel. Mertel goes down. Oh, sorry, that's not Mertel. That's Shane Edwards. A shot from the point goes off someone's skate. Yumina is trying to break it up. Ooh, Yumina is trying to skate it out of his zone. He took his eyes off the puck to look to see who to pass it to, and he got picked off, and that could have been a disaster. But Billers got it all the way, makes the save. We're going to have a face-off to his left. We got 8 minutes, 50 seconds left in this game. A little bit more. I'm, I'm, I think the, the shot production's been a little bit better in this period. I'm going to check our digital scoreboard really quickly. And, well, no, I was wrong. Utah has five shots on goal. Grand Canyon has six. So still, shot, shots on goal is still pretty low. Nice little save, pad save by Biller. And then he gets on the puck. And now, <laughs> now we've got a little bit of a scrum there, post-whistle scrum. Kind of one of those things where the players are trying to act like they're not actually interfering with each other, hanging on to each other's jerseys, pushing each other down or sitting each other, all the while pointing to the other guy saying, no, it's not me, it's him. So the line officials go and break that up. All right, Utah controls. Whoop, but not for long. Nice pickoff there by number 28. That's Kilgora. He ends up in the corner. Puck pops out, but nice little deflection there off to the side. Moorhead tries to send it up, but gets deflected again. O'Shea's like got it by his feet, and oh my goodness. Kilgora had a chance there, but he lost an edge and wasn't able to hang on to the puck. Chapman scoops it up behind his own net, being pursued by Pond, by McKay. McKay Pond. Sorry, McKay, you got two names that confuse me, so I'm just going to call you whatever comes to mind first, and that might not be the right one. All right, here goes Chapman with a, whoa, with a chance. The deflection trickles right through the open crease, and that Grand Canyon player was right there, but he isn't able to get it. And then Tucker goes for a backhander that's again deflected by a stick save by Biller. And now Utah's got a chance here. Can they do it? Look, Landa Kuzik, who's got speed, skates through. He goes for a centering pass. McKay was kind of lagging a little too far behind, so he wasn't there for it. And then he goes into the corner, and the puck comes back out, and Tucker's going to come down. He's got, he's got some help. Oh, and then he loses an edge. And now the puck just kind of goes the other way. I don't know. Is it going to be icing? The goalie's trying to indicate icing. A little bit sloppy here in this third period. Just kind of watching the puck go back and forth, kind of like that old school game Pong, where the ball just kind of bounces back, back and forth. All right, so we're gonna have a face off in the Utah zone. It's gonna be Landa Kuzik versus Poole. And who will win? Nice little move by Monaco there. A little soccer dribble move to get that puck loose. And now here he comes by himself across the blue line. And he, oh, he puts on the brakes. He goes down and jumps right back up. That's one of those agility drills, right? You go down and jump back up. 
and the puck kind of dribbles in towards Diamond, and he just decides to cover it up because Monaco's bearing down on him, and he decides better to be smart than sorry. We got six minutes, 55 seconds left in this period. And I'm watching the score. They're trying to, they're trying to make, uh, correct the uh, shots on goal here for the game, and I'm just watching the numbers go trickling up and down. It's pretty, pretty silly, silly looking. Cordura to Tarara. Tarara back to another player, and then Cordura tries to send a, send a pass across ice, but it deflects, and their boy, they're just struggling to get this thing up ice. Here comes Shackle. He goes across the line, but he's got he's facing three white jerseys. That's not going to do anything. Puck ends up getting in the corner. Baxter sends it around. And now that's up to Worth, to Fene. I can't, oh, to Kurt, sorry. And it's going to go back, and Yumini is going to have to go back and dig it out of the corner. He sends it around up to Kurt. Kurt tries to send it up to Pittman, but it gets intercepted. Definitely not a play is definitely not as crisp as it was in the first period and the first part of the second period. I thought the second period started getting kind of sloppy, and then this one's been this one's been kind of kind of sloppy too. I think I mentioned it'd be interesting be interesting to know what uh, Fornelius what kind of t chalk talk whiteboard talk he'd have in between periods, but. Uh, I'm not seeing a lot of change between the second period and this one. Just like I said, kind of sloppy. All right, we're going to face off to the left of Diamond. And it squirts in the corner. Chapman goes after it and sends it around the boards. To Kisleski, I believe that is. Yep, Kisleski. Everybody's in there. Oh, and I got a pile of bodies fighting for the puck. It finally comes loose. Slater's in there. Chapman comes in to help. Moorhead's trying to keep it in. Moorhead's trying to keep it in. Dimitriev's trying to poke it out. Finally ends up behind the net. Osola picks it up, tries to center it, but it bounces off, and now it looks like it's going to have to be picked up by Moorhead, who sends it back in to Nahara. And here comes Slater, and he goes for it, and he's unable to, like, get it lifted enough, and it goes into the leg pad. Then he tries to lift it again, and it goes behind the net, and now it's behind the goal around the boards, picked up by O'Shea, who passes back up to Slater, can't quite handle it. Osola tries to get it up to him. The puck is literally going like a pinball back and forth in the neutral zone. Not a whole lot of movement forward, like a whole lot of movement, but not a whole lot of progression. And it's just bouncing around, and we're at four minutes, 42 seconds. And Franco tries to send it up, unsuccessful. Randall's going to have to just hang on to it. He realizes he's got two, two white jerseys chasing him down. Finally gets sent way up ice to Poole, and Poole's not going to be able to get there in time. And then we've got Mr. 91. That is Mertel pinned up along the boards there. The puck's stuck up along the boards. Everybody's trying to dig it out. And then, oh, Millick managed to get it loose, and then finally... Chow comes up with it. He skates across. He goes a nice little drop pass to Andy, but Andy couldn't get all of his stick on it. Milk's over there trying to scoop that puck away from the boards. And then here comes GCU. I can see a Gary coming down and trailing his, his teammate, but I don't know who actually took it into the zone. Monaco flips around the boards. Andy's got it. He sends it across to Chow. Chow tries to get, send a forwarding pass, but Milk wasn't quite there yet. Gets ahead of him. So Grand Canyon picks it up behind their own net. I believe that's a Gary. He tries to send it up to Kil Kilgora. And it ends up back in the Grand Canyon zone. Three minutes, 25 seconds left in the, in the game, left in the period. Utah leads six to three. I think it's safe now to say that Utah's got a nice healthy lead with only three minutes and 14 seconds left. Here comes Grand Canyon. He fakes a slapper, wasn't a very good fake. And then he goes for a wrist shot. Nice stick save by Biller. So nothing comes out of that. Tarara picks it up, sends bounces up the boards to his teammate. Edward, Edwards calling for it. He finally gets the puck. He crosses across the blue line on the left side. Whoops. He stops for a second. He sends it up again to, to Kilgora, who's got to go and fight for it behind the net. 
Instead, Yumina ends up with it. He sends it across to Landa Kuzik. Landa Kuzik's going to skate it across on the left right side. He gets around one defender, and then he gets ridden off the puck. Pawn comes in to help, and then here comes Tucker. Tucker's going to carry it across. Nice little pass up on the right side to his teammate. I believe that's numbers. You don't have a number six. I'm not sure who that was. Anyway, stick saved by Biller gets deflected into the net. And uh, again, I'm I'm sort of pleasantly surprised at the uh, the lack of penalties here. It's been a physical game. We're seeing a lot of hits, plenty of physical physical hits, but I'm not. You know, we're not. They're not turning into penalties, and I haven't seen any of the ones that we call dumb penalties, right? Penalties after the whistle, um, you know, dumb hooking penalties or tripping penalties that are unnecessary. So I like a good physical game, but it gets kind of old if uh, everybody just decides to, like, it's time for a bar fight. All right, here we go. Puck dribbles loose deep into the Utah zone. So deep that it's gonna be icing. A minute, 50 seconds left in the game. This is our last game for the evening, and tomorrow we've got a full slate of four games for you. We've got, at 1.30, we've got the women, Utah versus UMass Amherst. Then the men's two, Utah versus Boise State. Again, the women play again, and they play, uh, Montana State plays University of Michigan, and then the headliner for tomorrow evening is the men's one team will take on Arizona State, and that should be a very exciting game. Arizona State listed very, ranked very high in the national rankings. Um, and Utah, not far behind. All right, puck ends up again deep in the Utah zone. Scooped up by Moorhead, up to Fene. He tries to poke it, poke it forward, but it gets intercepted. Brown's in there. Pitten scoops it up, oh, loses handle on the puck, and Fenny goes for it. Oh, and then he loses an edge. He gets spun around, here comes Tucker. Through the circle, he goes for a wrist shot. It either goes high or Biller got a piece of it and sent it high. And GCU tries again. Randall sends it up. Ahead into the corner it goes. Utah trying to clear it out. Grand Canyon trying to keep it in. Poole getting tied up there in the, in the next to the boards. And the puck just kind of sails out. I believe that was Randall took a wrist shot, but Biller had it all the way, makes a glove save. We've got just 44 seconds left in the game. And then, of course, the showcase continues on Saturday and Sunday. On Saturday, we've got another four games. We've got the men's two facing Utah faces Wyoming. The women's one takes on Michigan, and that's going to be a very close game. The, the Utah women went, went out to Michigan earlier this year to Ann Arbor and lost by one goal in overtime. So I know they're itching for payback. Following them is a five o'clock game. It's Montana State women versus UMass Amherst. And then in the evening at 7.30, it'll be the Utah men's one versus Arizona State. And we're winding down to the final 16 seconds. Olszewski centering pass, stick saved by Diamond, and it's gonna go all the way to the other end. And that might be it. Monica's gonna chase after it. Oh no, it's gonna be icing. And then the showcase wraps up on Sunday with two games. It's going to be the women UMass versus University of Michigan. And for the men, it'll be the men's two, Montana versus Utah. And as I said before, Montana's ranked fairly pretty high in the ACHA men's two West District. So Utah would really like to get a couple of points against them. And that wraps it up, folks. That is the final score. It's going to be six Utah, three Grand Canyon. Important points, as I said before, for Utah because all the teams that are facing they're facing the showcase this weekend are in the West District. So here's one win down for Utah. We'll be seeing you here tomorrow. Be sure to tune in at 1.30 or better yet. Come on out to the Salt Lake City Sports Complex and come to the game in person. You can buy your tickets online at the website. That's utahockey.com. If not, tune in on YouTube. Thank you again so much for listening and tuning in, and we'll see you tomorrow.